Firstly, I should preface by saying these are reasons I would vote for them, not necessarily reasons you would vote for them. Let's start with Harris. The main reason I can see to vote for her is that seem like a substantive reason to vote for someone. It seems petty. It seems, you know, small-minded, such and such. But, I don't really like Trump as a candidate. I don't like the things that he did as president in terms of spending, in terms of, you know, increasing reason for me not not to vote for Trump and therefore vote for Harris. But that begs the question. Does not voting for Trump mean that I have to vote for Harris? Did Donald Trump lose my vote with his policies? Maybe. Does that mean that Harris wins my vote because of that? Probably not. The other reason that I can see to vote for Harris is she would be the first woman president. And that is, I suppose, interesting in a historical sense similar to, you know, Obama getting in as the first black president. But does this convince me? No, it doesn't. Uh, I don't have any particular allegiance to this. I don't... The, the, the novelty of contributing to the first woman president, it doesn't really make any difference to me. I don't a good reason to vote for someone that's going to have a significant influence over your life. So that doesn't get me. But I suppose it's a reason. Just not convincing for me. What other reasons? Honestly, those are the only two reasons I've seen. Those are the only two reasons she seems to be asking people to vote for her. So that's it. That's all I'm going to assume people are voting on. Now, I'm sure there's probably some people that say, hey, look, you know, she's going to have progressive policies. I guess. Uh, I'm not really for progressive policies in terms of fiscal issues, which is kind of really the place she would have real power to do anything. I think social policy at this point is more decided by people, by, you know, culture, than it is by government intervention. I think at this point, the laws have been opened up and broadened out enough such that the social is issues of yesteryear, such as gay marriage or something like that, they're not really issues anymore. So being more socially progressive is not really a government issue anymore. So I don't think it has a huge impact in my decision of who to vote for in an election. It might be, you know, relevant in my position, you know, who to support in, like, entertainment or something like that, you know, culturally influential spaces, not government spaces. So why would I vote for Trump? I've already said why I wouldn't vote for him, which is his policies that increased debt, that, you know, increased spending, 
personally don't find him charismatic. I, I don't like his aesthetic to me is unappealing. I don't like it. I understand that other people do. Awesome. That's great. I just don't. It just feels a little huckstery to me. So I don't love it. But I understand that some people do. It's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Because to be honest, the brashness and abrasiveness, while unappealing to me, on just a personal level, I can actually see how it would be a boon in foreign relations, in foreign policy, and even in domestic policy, being hard-nosed and brash, honest, if controversial, I can absolutely see that being a bonus and a boon. And that brings me to the, I think, main reason most people like Trump and would vote for him. He is an outsider candidate that is controversial in the sense that he's pushing back. He is a vote for vengeance against elites, against people that seem to not care about us or just, you know, the little people in general. And Trump is an avatar. He is someone they are putting their hopes and dreams in, even if they are misplaced, even if he doesn't actually necessarily represent them. He is a totem. He is someone that is ostensibly going to hurt the people they don't like. Is that a great reason to vote for someone? I don't know. It can be if your system is broken. You'd say, hey, I want someone to tear it down even if they can't build it back up. I want someone to, you know, break down these ossified, calcified, rotten, corrupt structures. And however they do that, so be it. Now, honestly, does that convince me? That would not convince me on its own. That would actually make me much more reticent to support someone if their entire policy was simply just burn it all down, it's rotten, it's corrupt, I just want it destroyed. That's not enough. You need some level of hope, optimism, some degree of, you know, bringing stuff back. And I'll be honest, this version of his campaign, where he has a lot of bipartisan support, uh, or at least he has people that, you know, lifelong Democrats have, you know, Democrat, liberal, left-leaning policy stances. RFK, your Elon Musk's, your uh, Tulsi Gabbard's. On board, that does convince me that, you know, bridge building is absolutely possible and probably a doable thing a positive bridge building. It's not, we are united in our hate against Trump. It's we are united in our hope for a better tomorrow. That is a reason I would vote for him. In terms of policy, I would, I would vote for him over Harris. Because I think he'll do better on economics fiscal issues, these types of things. I think tax policy, his stuff was good. In terms of his approach to border security, I mean, that's inarguably, you know, that better, that was better than what we've got now. So, 
makes sense. I understand that there's, you know, arguments for how he has manipulated that into an issue. That's politics. Um, unfortunately, people play politics with people's lives and issues all the time. It is not just him. It is, you know, everyone. And I would say he's done it successfully, so, you know, you kind of laud him for that. Even if it's playing dirty, he's playing the game as the rules are written, unfortunately.
to say, you know, who I'm going to vote for and why I would vote for either of them. So, 